Now, we respond as individuals or as groups. And an analysis and vision statements evolve. They don't always stay the same because I like the idea of conditional. This is how I understand it today. My understanding is conditional. New facts, new information may come my way that will help me to keep shaping my analysis, to keep clearing my vision statement. So groups have to become pretty good at that. Now, I spent about an hour yesterday asking myself, why do I respond to a distress signal from a community? And I just picked out a few of what I have met as I have lived my life of 20 years. I respond, for example, because I have empathy with suffering communities and suffering groups. I respond because I've been instructed by my political party, my ideological grouping, to engage with this issue. It might get us some attention and a few extra votes. That person can be in your group too. Because I enjoy personal empowerment and the expression of my own leadership gifts. Because I have been employed and instructed by the company and the state to infiltrate, cause dissension and gather information. These are the people in any group, and that's only five out of the 20 different reasons I was able to list of people that I have met in groups. Um, I will note that I may have several reasons, but I have a primary one. And I will work only well with those I share that primary response with. And you know, people get so distressed about divisions and dissensions and confusions. Don't waste time trying to collaborate if you're finding it impossible. Split. I remember this happened in Eris and they were so distressed. And I'd go away for a day and think about it. And I went back and I said, you know what? We've got to deal with this creatively. Cher has to negotiate three groups now. Last week, they only had to negotiate one group. Because with my founding document, my vision statement, I can still stick to the key principles that maybe the whole group share. But I might do it better with a few people. I am in the table of observers now, which only deals with one little element of the errors. And there are only four of us. And we do great work. We don't spend as much time traveling or making phone calls or all the rest of it. So don't be afraid of suddenly, this, I remember realizing that I will go myself. If I feel I'm keeping back a group, <coughs> And I be really honest, the integrity of intention, I will move and I will form another group. For example, the table observers do a lot of observing, policing and judicial. But I'm also very interested in the Irish Convention, and I'm always very, also very interested in the whole issue of the law of ecocide. But I don't impose that on my small group. I go and do that myself, or I join another group where that is the key issue. So that is one thing that I would particularly want to pass on to you. I'm almost finished now. Uh, the last little bit that I wanted to speak about was, books have been written about our campaigns and our work already. We have Into the West by Lorna Siggins, and we have witnessed the truth a book written by Matthew Hassan Kuka, in which one particular chapter deals with the Agoni issue. And we have to be prepared for inaccuracies, different types of interpretation. But we can always get something valuable, even if it firms up our conviction, because we disagree with something that has been written. And I've just taken how this 
affected me from the chapter in Kuka's book, page 153. A lot of the politics of Mossop, that was the equivalent of Chelsea, became a theatrical dance to the gallery of the international community. That's how he interprets. But as they recognize the Agonis in their darkest hours, the international community has other things to attend to, and its attention span is not really that long. There are lessons here. To me, that was not true, and is not true, otherwise we wouldn't be sitting in this room tonight, almost 20 years after the Agoni issue became international news. The darkest hours is referring to the 10th of November, the day of the deaths of the Agoni Nine. All Western governments sent home their Nigerian ambassadors. So why did they do that? Because like groups like you and me, no government will move unless they're pushed. Um, and I looked at, we did this in a little exercise up in Eris recently, the UN investigation that happened in 96, and Nemo has mentioned one that happened in 2011. Amnesty International has produced significant reports. The Ethical Committee for Responsible, Corporate Responsibility UK, church-based, has also done a report, and Platform UK, and the Human Rights Defenders here in Dublin. Then I commend Earthwatch, Earth Rights USA. They spent 13 years on an Agoni case in an American court. Day and Co, a company in London, have now taken up another Agoni case. And Friends of the Earth Holland have taken up the case of four Agoni farmers. So it can be quite distressing to read other people's interpretation of who we are, what we did. However, it gives me an opportunity to reaffirm that indeed that is not an accurate description of how the memory of Ogoni has remained within the international community. I promised you that I would read you a poem from Nemo's book. And I had only a minute to skip through them, so I have chosen one. And there's a lovely thing at the beginning. He says, these poems may be copied, reproduced, and performed without prior permission. The author must, however, be acknowledged at all times. So I hope, I thank you for the permission, and that I fulfill my duty of acknowledging you as the author. And the title of the poem I've chosen is, Hopefully for a Season. Denied fruit plains, parched nutrients drained, compressed, trained, retrained to flow on fancy geometric parts for a season. Mud plains and denuded mangroves, blunt toes pointed, Entombed in embankments of putrid effluence, damned in concrete jaws for a season. Meandering snakes arrested, jailed in clamps, mud skippers sunk in toxic sediments until heavens weep torrents, rainfall falls thousand to watery graves global disasters democratized, hopefully for a season. Humanity caught napping at a moment's snap of nature's revolt at man's mega schemes, driven by torrents of greed and churning streets turned seas, hopefully for a season. Thank you.